Hello and welcome to Radio Waves by Todabert. If you enjoy reviews, comparisons, band scans of new and classic portable radios, then make sure to subscribe and tap the bell icon so you don't miss any of my most awesome videos. In front of us we have the Running Snail, model number MD090. It's an AM, FM, weather band, emergency radio. You can purchase this radio for around $29 from Amazon. And here it is, the Running Snail Multipurpose Crank Radio, MD090. Awesome! With a little snail for the O. How cool is that? <laughs> uh, looks pretty basic. Your basic brown box with nothing else on it except for that sticker. Okay. Let's go and open this up, see what we get inside. Box is empty. Set that off to the side. Let me pull out these accessories and we'll show you what you get for the money. Bear with me here. Okay. So first item, let me just kind of bring this down a little bit. Okay, everybody knows what this is, right? Can you guess, class? <laughs> the USB micro charging cable uses to charge the internal lithium battery, which is a nice 18650 style with a 2000 milliamp hour rating. Uh, I like um, the radios that include those bigger lithium ion batteries. It's awesome. So there's our charging cable. And this functions as an output charging cable also. So I'm going to show you this and put this aside and show you what else we get. You get this cool little adapter. This is for your iPhone or I, uh, Apple devices, like your iPod Touches and that, and your iPads. Though I don't think you'll be trying to charge those in an emergency. <laughs> uh, this, this is a pretty cool little guy. And it has a little uh, end on here, so you can plug in your micro cable into the back here. And now you have a cable, a lightning cable, that you can charge your iPhone. Pretty cool. Love it. Glad they, you know, it's a nice little extra they did. What do we get uh, for paperwork? Warranty. Okay, what kind of warranty do we get? 30-day money-back guarantee, 12-month replacement. All right. Happy snail. <laughs> Pretty basic stuff. Okay. Uh, let's see. Friendly remind. Please double check. Default mode. Pause read. In case I forget to say something on the video. <laughs> You'd be like, Bert, you forgot, but I showed you. <laughs> All right. Then we get a, a manual, a little snail on it. How cute is that? The manual is actually really clear and concise with a lot of diagrams, a lot of pictures. <laughs> um, so you can figure stuff out pretty easy on your own. And uh, let's see, there was a little chart in here that I liked. There you go, pause and read. If you need to, you can read as I move it along. Okay, <laughs> we're gonna speed up here. Uh, here we have the frequency chart for the frequency nuts in you. <laughs> Uh, weight. Uh, the cool thing is I noticed there's water resistant level of IPX3. I think it's like a splash resistance. Nothing great, but at least it has it. I didn't know that this radio had it. That's kind of neat. Safety instructions. Okay, there you go. Set that off to the side. And the radio comes in a like a little plastic tray here. So take that out. Put that tray aside and bring the radio out here front and center. Okay, so we'll go over dimensions real quick. We have six and one eighth of an inch across, three inches high, and a depth of two inches. For size comparison, wrist strap with the carabiner on there. I'll bring this up a little bit. We have a CC pocket. We have Iron Man. He's the man with a master plan. Okay, I don't think he usually says that, but you get the idea. All right, so. Uh, let's bring that back down. Close and personal. Okay, features of this radio. So some pretty neat features on this. In front of the radio, or if you want to call it the left side, we have the light, the main light, and it's pretty bright. Turn that on. Uh, neat thing about this light is it uh, focuses. So right now it's in flood mode, and if you turn this ring on top, it goes into spot mode. See how much that travels there? Okay, and then under here, we, this little light is a red blinking LED for the SOS, and I'll show that to you in a second. So let's check out this light. Turn this on, turn off my lights. You guys can see how bright the light is. It's pretty decent. So right now it's in flood mode, and you know you can read nicely with this, or you can spot the room really good. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna change it from flood to spot. So let's see if I can do this on camera here. Move with Mr. Iron Man. You can see the beam path. So now I got it in the spot mode. Big difference. Go back to flood. 
And now we have the flip mode, so it's nice and soft, easier to use. I like it in this mode the best. So there we go, turn the lights back on. Get a little demo of the light, that's always nice. Okay, so like I said, yeah, we'll do the siren thing in a second. That's always fun. <laughs> running snail. Yeah, he's running. Don't look like he's running, but he might be. <laughs> uh, we have a speaker grill here with a one and a half inch speaker. Here we have the dial. Uh, you can see the weather band on top there. FM 87 to 108, AM 520 to 1710, or 1700 is showing there. Uh, we have two uh, indicators, uh, LED indicators. This first one here turns green when you're in tune. The second one here is your charging indicator. When the battery is taking a charge, it turns red. Right now it's turning red because the solar panel is picking up ambient light. Uh, usually when you have it hooked up to the uh, USB power charger over here, it'll be red until it's charged. It turns green when it's when it's fully charged, which is nice so you know the battery is ready to go. Um, on the front here, you'll see a band select switch. We have weather band, FM, AM. We have a tuning knob and a volume on off wheel there. Up here, we or down here on the bottom, we have the... Uh, AAA um, battery source or lithium ion battery. So it has that internal 18650 battery, the 2000 milliamp hour rating, which is great. But if you if that battery ever runs dead, you have an optional compartment here and you can put AAA batteries to run the radio. So you just switch that over to AAA mode if you need to run off uh, dry cells, which is good. It's nice to have that option because you never know. If you're, you get this radio and you're like, you're in an emergency and all of a sudden it's like, it's not working, it won't charge. Well, at least you have the ability to put regular batteries in it. You know, just empty out your remotes, you know, from your TV and put them in here and off you go. So that's nice to have. Right hand side, we have the uh, antenna. This antenna is like a little baby thing that comes out here. It's a whopping six and three quarter inches. <laughs> it does pivot 360, which is nice. So we'll just push that back in right now until we're ready to turn it on. Uh, also, we have a little jacket here, and our water resistant jacket. It says DC in and then USB. So here we go, there's your little micro USB charge in, and then there's your USB charging out. So that's nice. Okay, uh, going here we have the wrist strap with the carabiner on it. Okay, uh, on the bottom of the radio, we have uh, a switch. One mode is to charge the uh, phone. So once you have your cables hooked up, you hit this button. It initiates the charge sequence to charge your phone. And if you go forward, let me just cover this and wake up the neighborhood. Uh, this will initiate the siren mode. Yeah, that'll that'll wake up the neighborhood. <laughs> Pretty loud. So yeah, that's nice to have that feature. Good thing it's on the bottom. This door here, two screws, pull this open. Your 18650 cell is in here with the proprietary connector. Um, if you can't find a replacement battery, I'm sure some suppliers out there will probably start carrying these since these radios are so popular. So don't don't worry, I think you'll be able to replace it or have an extra one for a spare. Uh, so let's see, top of the radio is pretty cool. There's a switch for the light. And here we have a solar panel. I, I didn't see if it charged. It's pretty small. I would say it would take like a day, day and a half to probably charge this battery in strong sunlight, direct sunlight, like outside, not just in a window. So that's just my, my thoughts on that. And then when you flip this open, it's a reading lamp. Yeah, it's got four bright LEDs. <laughs> so again, uh, you can light the room. With the, oh, I guess I'll turn off the other light too so you can see how bright this one is. This is actually really nice. This this can definitely be a nice flood lamp reading light. Yeah, that's that's just really handy to have. Yep, nice and diffused. And you can just have your book here, do what you gotta do, read. Um you may have to like prop it up so you can get it to like angle down more if you had to, but or just pivot this a little bit more. There we go. Pretty neat. I like that. Always extra, have extra lights is a good thing. You know, what if the one thing burns out, you got something else to use? So that's perfect. All right, so we showed you that. Uh, okay, the back side here, we have a door, which if you open this up, is your battery compartment for the three AAA batteries. What I would do is probably keep a pack of AAA batteries handy near the radio, and then I'd probably keep this little goofy connector inside the radio. That way you always have it handy. You'll always be able to find a cord like this laying around the house. I don't think you have to tie this to the radio. You could, I guess, but the little adapter you might lose. So if floating in here would be a perfect idea, then you know exactly what's in there. Uh, and you can just go, hey, that adapter's in there to charge my phone. So that's a cool place to store that. So there we go. Yeah, I never recommend leaving batteries in there. If you did, it would just cause corrosion. 
All right, so this whole outside exterior has a soft touch to it. It's a soft touch plastics. I think it's like a silicone type coating. I don't think it's that rubberized stuff, which is good. This is a better type coating. So just letting you know that. All right, so I think we went over all the features except for the dynamo. The dynamo fits pretty nice in there and it, you know, does its thing. You just crank away, yay. You know, a little light will go on and go to town. Rock and roll. In the manual, I believe it said, uh, I forget how many minutes per whatever, but it's, you know what, I will, since we're still here doing this, there is a chart in here that talks about the charging. Oh, uh, there we go. Okay, one minute of winding gives five to 10 minutes of radio play at medium volume and 15 to 20 minutes of light. So there you go. I'm not gonna try it, but I'll take their word for it. <laughs> okay, well, let's get going. Let's turn this thing on. All right, so with the volume, we're in weather band. Go ahead and extend the little antenna. I'm just gonna use it. Let's see what we can get on the weather band. That's not as small. Waves were one foot. The water temperature was 73. A little harder to hang on to. Lows around 60 in the suburbs and in the mid 60s downtown. Monday, partly sunny. Chance, chance of shower. Wave to the 70s. Station 30 percent. Monday so that's night, my local. Tuesday night. Mostly clear. Lows in the lower 60s. Okay, so you get the idea there. Uh, FM. We'll go to FM here. Um, FM reception report. Uh, FM sensitivity. I want to give it around a two. Two star rating around okay. I think it's the tuning knob. It's so small. It's difficult to get on station. I got maybe a couple dozen stations when I was outside with this thing, and it might be because it's real tiny, a wimpy antenna here. It's pretty wimpy. Um, so I wasn't able to get a ton. It's definitely DSP in here. Um, so I got a couple dozen stations. I got all the strong ones. That was nice. I'll go ahead and tune to the bottom. We'll do a quick band scan of the FM. Uh, the selectivity was uh, okay to good, so average, um, because the DSP was able to lock on the stations fairly decently. Um, so that's it in a nutshell. It's an emergency radio. It gets my NOAA band fine. If it can get me a couple dozen FM stations, that's a great thing, an emergency radio. Nothing bad about that. So let's go ahead and see if we can hear anything tonight. Let's turn that up. See if we can't find anything indoors here. Also, that there is a fit in this. Giving them a second chance. But I'm going to do it. Why? Yeah, that's you would do with a ceramic bowl or something. Got him into... Exact same hope. Now we. Oh, just by the way, this is doing really good in the house now. <laughs> I think I'm going to upgrade the uh, reception to um, okay to good. So we'll, we'll definitely give it a bonus because it is receiving in, inside really well with the little antenna. Pretty impressed. Good old fashioned gu During the Hyundai Epic Summer Sales event, you can find the sedan or SUV this could be bigger. perfect for you and your family. <laughs> okay, so let's see. Uh, we get some radio tatterbird rocking on this thing. Um, I'm going to turn that on. 
977, we'll have to find it on the dial. Let me just back off my volume a little bit here. I don't want any distortion. Okay, so let's bring it back. So I can get a lock with the tuning light. Flash. Okay. that song <laughs> okay there we go that's our audio test on the radio awesome we turn off radio Tidebird, unplug turn off the transmitters yeah we're gonna do an AM band scan here put this antenna away see how that retracts in there it's kind of you know how it pivots and swivels push that back in line it up if it doesn't quite line up just spin the antenna a little bit so you don't jam it you don't want to break it you know, treat it gingerly because I can see that breaking if you're not careful. Okay, so let's go ahead and go to the AM band. Now, during the day, the AM band wasn't fantastic. I just got my basic locals. That was it. So I'm not expecting much from it. Okay, turn it up. Let me go to the bottom of the band here. Okay. It's got a nice white indicator though, which is nice. Out at nusports.com, 
312-644-6767 is the number to call if you want to chat. You can also text me at 67011. Uh, tarot cards or fortune telling kind of stuff. See if this is uh, the projective drawings are oftentimes that I use them as a transition when I'm giving somebody a, a psychological battery. Okay, so that's uh, WLW, Cincinnati, Ohio, 300 miles. I figured it might get a local. A semi local, anyway. A transition time. That's good. So I have them do some drawings, and sometimes I look down ball one. Don Cooper on the phone to the bullpen, they're going to start working. 720 out there WGN. So the inning's going like this. Fletcher with a leadoff single, followed by a Calhoun double. Okay, so that is Zoomer Radio, which I didn't expect to get with this radio, because like I said, during the day, I wasn't getting anything. So yeah, that's 740 CFZM, Toronto, Ontario, 460 miles. Sweet. That's nice. This is probably WJR. I'll just check it. Okay, so not bad. This is uh, some guy preaching. Hang on one second. WJR, Detroit, Michigan, 270 miles. Closer Brandon Morrow not likely to be activated from the disabled. 780. WBBM. Was 800. Cool. CKLW, Windsor, Ontario, 270 miles. I didn't expect to get these stations, guys. Wow. Nice. 840? There's a time. Central Standard near Chicago, Illinois. Got to do that. <laughs> so that was 840. I think this is 860. Just check that real quick. Nice. So they got some kind of music playing. Rarely do I hear music on 860. CJBC Toronto, Ontario, 460 miles. I'm just going to kind of cruise the dial. We know we can pick up decent amount of station. That's good. Let's see what it can do up here. The 4G LTE data. And now, for a limited time, when you purchase the new line or bring your number, it's probably 1,000 ESPN. So 1020 is uh, uh, 1020 is KDKA, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, 450 miles. I haven't noticed any birdie tones. It's a good thing. This is 1040. Des Moines, Iowa, 280 miles, WHO. 1100, Cleveland. Probably 1120. I'm just going to cruise the rest of the band. That music you're hearing is 1610 CHHA Toronto. Okay, 
Okay, I'm going to check that. That might be uh, 1630. We're going to give it a shot here in a pocket. We're going to jam it up there and just see if that's what it is. Dun, 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 dun. It might be a sports station. Hang on one second. Wins the job. Uh, we have a big development So I think that was. Whatever it is, you know, for credit or something. Yeah. Towards the top yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, no. Sixteen eighty. Grand Rapids, Michigan, 140 miles, WPRR. So it sounds like we're getting stations all the way up to 1700. Cool. All right, let's uh, turn this off. Do final thoughts on the running snail, MD090 AM FM weather band emergency radio. Uh, yeah, I'm telling you, this is a great radio. Wow. Um, you know, my... Go to a recommendation that lately has been the Kato Voyager V2 uh, for 1999, but the prices have gone up on that one now. I think it's like $23. Well, this radio here is $29, but sometimes it's $25, and sometimes it's on a special deal. Um, you can get this like on a lightning deal, I think for under $20 sometimes, so keep your eyes out. Um, I'll link this down below. Um, if you guys are going to buy this radio and you want to support the channel, you like this radio, by all means, uh, click the link. If you buy it through the Amazon link there, uh, I get a little bit of a, a commission, which is, I don't know, on this radio, probably about 50 cents or so, or 40 cents. I'll use it towards more purchases of emergency radios, and we get to review some more, but I really am happy with this one. Now, I, the NTPAL I did it was very similar, but the tuning was really hard. This one's not so bad. This is actually a lot easier to tune. I know it's still a smaller knob, but I wasn't, like, upset with it. It actually tuned really good. I was able to do a lot of fine-tuning on the AM band, so... Yeah, pretty happy with this. This is a keeper. Definitely not going back. Uh, and having the adjustable light, which I know the other radio had. I just didn't know about it. I must have missed it. But that's a really cool feature. I love the fact that it has the big battery inside here. And, you know, we're going to probably run it to the end here. But we're going to go ahead and show you what that battery looks like. What the heck? It's the end of the video. And if you're still here, you're going to get a little surprise, a little fun little insider. So let's go ahead and just open this up. And then we'll show you the battery. There's the battery. So yeah, lithium, it's marked. Let's see, so you guys can see it upside down. Um, it's marked 18650, 2000 milliamp hour, 3.7 volts. The date it was made. There's the connector where it plugs in. So it's a pretty basic setup. Um, yeah, and this is just door just kind of fits on here and slides on. It's pretty, pretty basic stuff. If you can get it to line up again. Okay. So yeah, it's a, a cool cell. I mean, I think there's going to be extras out there. Um, so you can buy, you know, a spare if you're, you know, worried about, okay, I'm in the dark here. Black on black. I can't see what I'm doing. Um, you'll be able to put it in pretty, pretty easy. If you got a screwdriver small, you need kind of a smaller Phillips to get these little screws um, out. But uh, if you can do that, then you can have an extra replacement handy. That's a good thing. But remember, it has the dry cell storage, three AAA batteries. I would only use this to charge the uh, charge. I'd only use this to run the radio, and that's it. I wouldn't use it to run the light. You'd probably run your light, to, you know, the battery's dead real quick if you ran that light with it. So just use it for your radio. But uh, nice to have. And you know what? This is number one thing is communication, knowing what's going on out there in the world. So yeah, this gets a buy from Totterberg. Yeah! Definitely, 100%. Run out and get one. This, for the value that you get for this thing, it just, it does so much for the money. Uh, I'm really happy with it. It does not have to be digital. I'm very happy with the analog. I'm very happy with the DSP. I upgraded my FM rating to, to right in the middle, two and a half star. Maybe it pushes it to three. I, I don't know. It, it seemed like it did really good indoors, which I did not expect. I was outside, and maybe I wasn't taking my time with this little dial, this little tuning knob. And, uh, yeah, I bet you this probably rates about two and a half star, probably even a three star rating. So... Uh, because of the DSP did the real well with that FM reception, especially indoors. I was really, really happy with that. Um, that was nice. So yeah, overall, I mean, the speaker is what it is. It's for emergency purposes only. It's not, this radio is not meant to be run every day. Um, it's meant to be there in emergency for you. 
So you don't have to, you know, it's not going to be rocking and rolling. But you do have that siren that really is really going to get attention. Um, and then you have that, you know, flashing red LED there. So yeah, rocking. All right, we went over time, but that's okay. Having fun. So if you like the video, you like Todd Herbert, yeah, give me a big thumbs up, big like. I appreciate it. You guys are awesome. All my subscribers, thank you very much. Uh, two, new to the channel, you love running snail. You're like, running snail, yeah, dude, that's cool looking. All right, I want the emergency radio. So they're sweet. Who the hell is Todd Herbert? Well, if you don't know who I am, just hit the subscribe button, hit the bell icon, find out who I am, what I am, what we do here on this channel. Uh, have some fun along, along with this. Uh, it's a good time. Uh, three, comment below what you think about the running snail MD090. Is it for you? Is it for some family member? Uh, do you like it? There's something about it you wish it had um, that I missed. You know, they'd be like, oh, Totterbird, it'd be better if it had that. You know, let me know. We'll let you speak your mind. All right, guys. Well, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next episode. Goodbye.